G'day and good morning and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I photographed a great egret and how I processed that image. If you saw my previous video, you would have seen me talking about how I actually captured a couple of exposures and blended them in Photoshop. So I thought it might be an interesting um, exercise to show you exactly how I did that and why I did it. So for those that are new here, I'm a wildlife photographer based in Australia. I shoot out in the field, I do gear reviews, and I do processing videos like this one today. If that sort of content interests you, you can hit that little blue fairy ring in the bottom right hand corner of your screen to subscribe. I very much appreciate it. To those that have already subscribed, thank you so much. I got a notification from YouTube recently of over 100, so thank you to those. Keep the questions coming. I'll definitely answer any questions you put in the comment section and uh, thank you very much. Okay, so just to give the image a little bit of context, I was at a local lake and there are a lot of water birds. Uh, a great egret is a large white uh, bird. It's the largest egret in Australia. So it is pretty big compared to the other birds. Uh, if you're not aware, I currently shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV and a Canon 500mm lens with a 1.4 extender. That means I'm shooting with a focal length of 700mm and it's a fixed focal length. So what that means is that I can't zoom. So I'm fixed, so if a bird comes too close and it's too big in the frame, there's nothing I can do about it unless I move backwards. Um, so those are the limitations with a fixed focal length, is often subjects can get too big in the frame. But there is a couple of things we can do to overcome that, and hopefully today's video will show you something that you may not have thought about before. So as I mentioned, I was laying in next to the water, this egret has started walking towards me, and uh, I could see these beautiful plumes coming off the back of the bird, and that made for a really interesting photograph, but I instantly knew that the bird was too close. I didn't have much space at the bottom and at the top. I had the focus point on the head of the bird and I couldn't do much more than that. But I thought, oh, I really would like to get some of the reflection and more above. So I currently use back button focus. What that means is you use a button on the back of the camera to lock focus or focus on the bird. Press the shutter to take the photo. So what that can mean is, uh, as I'm laying there, I've focused on the bird and then I've released the focus and I've taken a photo quickly and then I've moved the camera up quickly, taken a photo, moved it down, taken a photo. So I've taken pretty much three photos in very quick succession, all with the same focus and with the plan of merging those in Photoshop. Now this only really works if the bird's not moving very quickly as you can imagine, if a bird's flying or it's moving quickly or doing some sort of behavior, you wouldn't have time and it would be very difficult to stitch those later on. I have shown in a previous video how you can, after the bird has gone, take photos below and above if you're wanting to create more canvas. And I'll link to that video above. Okay, so I've been there, I've taken those photos. I'll jump onto the computer, I'll show you uh, how I've, what I do in Lightroom. Okay, so we've jumped into Lightroom, I've downloaded the photos and I've selected the few um, that I'm talking about. So as you can see here, this is the full frame, this is the raw image of the Great Egret as it was walking towards me. And as you can see, it's very tight at the top here. Uh, we don't have a lot of room above its head and below, and we're not getting any reflection down here. So, you know, it's still a nice photo, but it just feels a little tight in the frame and we don't want that. Okay, so... So I've taken that shot and then I thought, oh gee, I need to um, take a number of shots to try and create more space. So as you can see here, the next shot I've started, I've uh, moved up and we've got this extra space above and we've obviously chopped off the legs. And then the next shot I've gone to the center of the bird or the middle of the bird, chop off its head and down here. And then the final shot is the uh, reflection. So we now have three photos. Uh, of the same bird and I want to merge those. So I need to select the three photos. So we'll quickly do that. And then I need to come up to photo and photo merge panorama. If I hit panorama, it'll bring up the panorama merge uh, window and Lightroom's having a go at doing it. And you know, judging by the, um, judging by what Lightroom suggests, it looks good. So I'll just hit merge. Okay, so Lightroom's done a pretty good job of merging those three images together. So I currently have this file, uh, which is cropped. You can see if I hit the crop button, you can see the uh, images and what it's done. So we've sort of got this crop. I've, we'll now just do some raw adjustments in 
Lightroom. So the exposure is pretty good. We just need to get those highlights down. So as I've mentioned numerous times with white birds, you don't want to blow those highlights. So you want as, as many details as you can get in the whites. So we'll turn the highlights quite a way down. Uh, the whites will also do the same thing. Um, don't want the image to go too dark though, but uh, it's looking pretty good. The shadows, probably won't play with the shadows too much. I kind of want a bit of a moody, dark looking image. And the blacks down a touch, just to give it a little bit of contrast. The bird's almost too left in the, too central for me. So I'll probably just pull it in the right a little bit so that um, it's not quite as centered. Possibly a little bit better and might take a little bit off the top a touch. Kind of to match the bottom. Okay, so I usually put a little bit of texture, about, about, about 10 texture um, and nothing clarity. Vibrancy, I'm not going to do a heck of a lot. Plus seven maybe and saturation the same. So I don't want it too vibrant. The, uh, I want a bit of a moody image as mentioned. Um, come down to remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile correction. I do that on every image. I don't usually do vignetting, but I think on this image it could be quite powerful. Yeah, so I think it works fairly well. So it draws your focus on the, um, onto the bird itself. So I'm liking, liking the look of this image. Now, you would have noticed in my previous videos, I like to clean my images in Photoshop. So as, I, as I'm looking at this, that I'm looking to see what distracts me. So when I'm looking at the image, what is it about it that distracts my eye? So I can immediately see little white spots in the background here, and my eye gets drawn to those, and even these big white spots um, on the bottom half of the bird here. So those draw my attention, even this lighter part here, and maybe even this. So what I'll do now is I will open this up in Photoshop and I will just clean up the background a bit so that it's not as distracting. So we'll do that quickly. Okay, so it's opened up in Photoshop. So I'll just uh, duplicate, Control J, and you can do this a few ways. Um, you could possibly use the uh, healing brush tool I actually quite like to just use the content aware. I usually use this lasso tool and I simply just draw around the areas that I want to get rid of. I hold down shift to add to the selection and I just manually now go around everything that I want changed or removed. And again, this is completely personal preference. Um, I've always done this and I just prefer a clean looking background image because I want people to focus on the bird and not necessarily little items in the background that may be distracting. So. Okay, so I've made my selections on the image. Now I simply just go up to Edit, Fill, Content Aware, click OK, and magically Photoshop does its thing. And uh, a lot of the times it does a fantastic job, to be honest, and uh, it's a pretty amazing tool. Um, okay, so it's come back. Well, let's have a look at how it performed. Um, so let's have a look at the before and after. Now it's done a fairly good job. I can see a few little things that it needs to improve upon and a couple of things I've missed. Still not 100% happy with a couple of areas. Uh, this is a little bit bright here and this area here still needs a little bit of work. 
Okay, so the other way, if you're not having any luck with the content aware fill, uh, I've got another technique where I simply um, just copy a part of the existing image over the top of this image. So I need to create a uh, duplicate layer, so Control J, and I will look at this. And so this area here is, is a little bit light, but this area here uh, looks pretty good. So I want to copy from here and put it onto here. So I just need to move this layer down. And if I put a mask on this and invert it, and now I use the paintbrush tool and I lower the opacity to say 15%. So the opacity 15%. And now what I'm doing is I'm revealing the layer this, that I've moved over. Um, very subtle, but hopefully it is doing the job. good to me and now I just need to this area here it's a little bit light and this is a little bit dark so I'll do the same thing um, so I'll create a I'll create a merged layer what I mean is uh, of all these three layers so control alt shift and E and now I'll just quickly move this one um, over, put a mask on it, invert it, brush tool, 15% opacity, and I paint that on. And just to remove that dark and that light area. I'll show you before and after, very slight, just so it's not as distracting. Okay, so that is the cleaned up version. Um, I'll show you before and after. So that was before and that's after. Very slight, but I like that. I, I much prefer this to that. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think, whether you think I'm a little bit um, going too far, but that's what I like to do. And then I'll do a couple of final touches to this image just with contrast. Um, and I need to get rid of the noise as well. There's a little bit of noise in this image. I've got a video, I've put the link above about how I talk about Topaz denoise and how excellent it is at removing noise. So I'll quickly do that. So filter, Topaz Labs, denoise. Uh, I'm still using an old version. I think they're up to version 2.0, um, but I've currently still got the older version installed. So that's why mine might look a little bit different to yours. I just like the uh, slider that is in the old version, which unfortunately is not in the so I come up to the head and I hit the split tool. I can see before and after. It's done a pretty good job at removing that noise. So I just hit apply. Okay, so that's done. You can see the after and that's before. It's done a pretty good job. Um, so I'm looking at the image and I am happy with that. Okay, so that's the final image. It uh, looks good. As you can see, we've captured the entire bird. Uh, we've got a, quite a nice reflection, and this wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't taken the multiple exposures. As you remember, we could only fit in just fit the bird in. So by using that technique of just being aware of it, taking multiple exposures, blending them in Photoshop, has allowed me to capture this image. And I quite like this image, it's something different. Um, you know, the plumes, the reflection, I think it works well. So let me know in the comments below whether you like this image and whether you think it was worth all this drama of capturing the multiple exposures. But hopefully just remember next time you're out in the field and perhaps the bird's too big, think about possibly taking a couple of exposures and trying to blend them later on. Definitely helps me out every now and again and it might help you out as well. 
Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the content, hit that little fairy ring. Um, leave the comments as mentioned. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Really, really appreciate the support. Uh, until the next video, take care. Bye for now. Thanks. See ya.